our cedar itself, when it's ready to carve, it will give itself to us. In her Shelton studio, art is a language that speaks to Andrea Wilbur Saigo. It's always been told we didn't have a written language, but this is it. Each nudge, each nick, a dialect. It's all of our history, art in every one of those art pieces. From fashion runways to fleece blankets, for decades, corporate America has plastered Native American art and design all over their products. But consumers may not know that very little of that mass-produced work is done by real Native artists, like Andrea. I've been beat out by quite a few non-Native artists for good jobs. I would have to say they get better prices than we do. In 1990, Congress created the Indian Arts and Crafts Act. Under the law, if you're representing or selling your work as native and it's not, you're committing a federal crime. Instead, you have to be honest and say the work is native inspired or native style. This is a law that does not have the teeth that it should have to protect the legitimate Indian arts and crafts industry. Seattle-based Indigenous rights lawyer Gabe Galinda says in 2022, the act is outdated and lacks accountability. What enforcement is in the act? It appears that's what's missing, but there has to be some process by which the question is being asked. Are you Indigenous? Is your art Indigenous? And if you say you are and you say it is, can you please show us the proof? The penalties for misrepresenting Native art are steep. A $250,000 fine and up to five years in prison. But it's not enough to stop everyone. That's Lewis Anthony Rath, a.k.a. Tony Rath, on Instagram. Creating work, federal investigators say he illegally passed off as authentic at places like Pike Place Market. Prosecutors have charged him with violating the Indian Arts and Crafts Act. These acts operate to displace Indigenous artists from their craft, their livelihood, and from the economy that they deserve to have a place in. Ripping off Native American artwork is a multi-million dollar business. Take a look at some of these knockoffs confiscated by investigators. In 2016, law enforcement seizures in New Mexico and California uncovered $35 million in counterfeit art. And it's a crime that has an international reach. The U.S. Department of Justice recently charged eight people with smuggling in this jewelry that appeared to be Native American. But the items were actually knockoffs smuggled in from the Philippines. What type of person does that? Knowingly <laughs> misrepresents themselves, a whole cultural identity yeah. to sell art. Who does that? I think people think it's an easy way just to make some money. This whole store is about Native people who are inspired and are creating this beautiful art. The CEO of the company Eighth Generation, Colleen Echohawk, says she didn't know it, but even here at a shop dedicated to Native American art, they sold a counterfeit item. So we did find one of the men that was charged mm -hmm. with violating the yeah. Indian Arts and Crafts Act. Yeah. He did sell here uh -huh. several years ago. Mm -hmm. We found on his Instagram page, yeah. he mentioned the store. Yeah. Um, were you aware of that? I was made aware of that. And, and it was because of that instance that we started collecting tribal identification mm. and asked people to show us you know their enrollment cards in their tribe so that we can ensure that the art that we are putting out there is going to um, go back to the native community and see prosperity for native people and native artists but pretty much until this is done, this is where I live, is out here in the shop. Back in Andrea Wilbur Saigo's Shelton studio, she says there's another problem with the law. I will change this federal law in my lifetime. If she or any other Native artist allows a non-Native person to help with the creation, under current law, that too has to be labeled Native style or inspired work. Andrea says she could really use help from her mother, who's also a carver. But since her mother is not Native, that's not possible. Now you're telling me I have to market my work the same as any other non-Native person. We should be able to say it's Native, it's ours. It's cultural, it's spiritual, it comes from the roots that we were all born from, and nobody can clip those roots. The only thing this law does is harm Native people from succeeding. In a few weeks, Andrea's biggest dream, her latest work, will find a permanent place in downtown Seattle. It's Grandmother Frog. She's 21 feet. A welcome figure that authentically speaks the unique language of this land. It's our written history, our future, and our present. 
without it, we lose a big part of our soul on where we've came from and where we're going. <sighs> yep, we haven't went anywhere. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> If you're in the market for Native American artwork, ask for proof that the piece was created by a Native artist. That could include things like the artist's biography or information about their tribal affiliation. And remember, watch out for words like Native inspired or Native style. Those pieces could be created by anyone. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa.